These are the exercise set problems from section 2.2 .2 on a binomial distribution. On this first per, uh, problem, it says a person claims that 10% of the people will favor a ban on talking on the cell phone while driving. If you sample 200 people, what is the probability that at least 15% of them will favor the ban? If uh, So let's go ahead and go with that, first of all. if uh, So this is binomial because they either... Uh, favor the ban or they don't, and the percentage, the probability that they uh, do favor the ban maintains the same probability of 10%. So go to the binomial sheet and go to the um, uh, left side where, you, uh, where it says binomial. And right here, put in your number of trials. On this particular problem, it's 200. And also put in your P, which is your probability of success, uh, and that is favoring a ban, which is 10% or 0.1. Now, here you put in the lower number of successes, and the, it says here at least 15% of them, of the 200 people you sampled. So that means 15% all the way up to 100%. So the least number of successes is not 0 0.15. It's not 15%. It's 15%, point, uh, point 0.15 times the 200 people. 15% of the 200. I means multiply. 15% is 0.15. So 0.15 times 200. The most there, and that's 30. And then the most there could be is all 200. So when you say at least 15%, that means 15% of the 200 up to 100% of 200. So there's your x and y. The y is the upper value. So the probability is right here, uh, 0 0.0163. Now, it says if you did find uh, that at least 15% of the 200 people favor the ban, what do you think about the claim? Well, it's a very low probability that at least 15% would uh, do this. So if you found that at least 15%, uh, that if you did find that at least 15% favored the ban, then probably this statement of 10% is not true, or maybe where you got your sample from is a biased sample due to age or something like that. Okay, problem two says, if you flip a coin ten times, is the distribution of the number of heads approximately normal? Well, the number of times you're flipping a coin is ten times. And we really don't need the X or Y on this, because it didn't give us anything like that. But the probability that a coin lands uh, heads or tails is uh, 50%. So this one uh, was heads, but it's still 50%. And now the distribution. Well, let's take a look at this here. Here is the graph of this distribution. A normal distribution is a bell-shaped distribution. It looks like a bell. And it actually runs a test for it here to see if it's normally distributed. And it says yes. So this it looks like a bell curve, close enough to a bell curve. In fact, that's as about as far as ways you can be. And, and the answer here would be yes. This turns out to be yes. Any time, n times p is greater than or equal to 5. And the n times q is greater than or equal to 5 greater than or equal to 5. So n times p, that's 10 times a half, is 5. Well, 5 is greater than 5. If the p is 0.5, you get the q by subtracting 1 minus p. Well, 1 minus 0.5 is 0.5, and n times q then would also be 5. So as long as both of those numbers is greater than or equal to 5, which they are, then it's approximately normal. And it says so right here. OK, let's go on to the next problem. It says 10% of people favor a ban on talking on a cell phone while driving. If you sample 20 people, is the distribution approximately normal? Well, let's take a look. So 10% uh, right here, 0.1. And you sample 20 people right here, 20. And it says no, it's not normally distributed. This does not look like a bell. And it's no. The reason it's not is because p times n is 2. And it needs to be greater than or equal to 5. Um, 4 says 10% of the people uh, favor a ban on talking on the cell phone while driving. From a sample of 500 people, what is the probability that between 40 to 60 of them say they would favor the ban? Well, I'll tell you what, let's shrink this down so we can see the question as we're doing it. I'll tell you what, let's move this up a little bit. So this is problem 4. So right here, problem 4. So 10%, right here is your P. You sampled a total of 500 people, so your N is 500. And it says between 40 and 60. So your X is 40, and your Y is 60. And your answer is right here. So what's the probability of this happening between 40 and 60? 88.31% or 0 0.8831. OK. Problem 5 says 70% of uh, people favor a ban on texting while driving. 
from a sample of 500 people was the probability that between 340 to 360 of them say they favor a ban on texting. Well, 500, we're looking between 340 and uh, 360 of them favor the ban, and the probability that one of them does is 70%. Uh, so type in a 0.7 here. Always make sure that the probability of what they're giving is the same as what they're looking for. 70% of people favor a ban on texting. What's the probability of this many do what? Favor the ban on texting. See, they're just talking about the same thing. So if it would be something like 70% favor a ban on texting, what's the probability that 340 to 360 don't favor the ban? Then you wouldn't put 0.7 right here, you'd be putting 0.3 because if 70% favor the ban, 30% don't favor the ban. But either way, on this problem right here, the answer is 0.694. Okay, 6 says assume that there are the same percentage of males in a class as females. So it must be 50% both. Out of a class of 30 students, what is the probability that 15 are male? So the probability of male is 50%. And out of a class of 15 students, so the n is 15, what's the probability that um, uh, 15 are male? Now, it doesn't say at least 15 or more than 15. It says 15. So both your x and y is, is 15 because we're looking for the probability of 15, meaning exactly 15. And this number right here, 3.052e, that means times 10 raised to the negative fifth. That means move your decimal point over five places. So it would be like 0 .00003. So very close to 0% that there would be exactly 15 of them. Actually, I got this wrong here a little bit. This is um, 30 out of a class of 30. Sorry, that should be a 30 right there. Now what's the probability? Here it is, 0.1444. So that would be the answer to that problem. Let's go on to uh, 7. Um, before I go on to 7, I'll show you this here. See, even though this is such a low probability, it's still, that's the average amount or expected value. That's the one with the highest probability. Here's your standard deviation, here's your variance, and is the distribution approximately normal? Yes, you can see it here, it's looking more like a bell curve in there. Okay, 7 says, same percentage of males and females, so your P is going to be 0.5 out of a class of 30, that's 30. What is the probability of at least 18 males? Well, at least 18 means 18 or more. It means it could be clear up to all 30. And here's your answer to that problem, 0.18079. Okay. On problem 8, assume that three, assume that there are the same percentage of males and females. Out of a class of 30, was it probably that more than 18? Well, if you say more than 18, then you got to start at 19 then can't include the 18. So that would be 0.102. Okay, assume same percentage out of a class of 30. This is problem 9 here. What is the probability at most 11? Well, at most 11 means 11 or less, so there could be as few as 0 all the way up to 11. And here's your answer, 0 0.1002442. 10 says assume that they're the same percentage out of a class of 30. What's the probability of less than 11? Well, less than 11 is 0 up to 10. You can't include the 11 then and you get 0 0.049. Okay, uh, 11 says assume the same percentage out of a class of 30 students. What is the expected number of males? Well, the expected number of males is 15. That's the expected value or that's the average amount. Now, you don't have to have the x or the y in there and you still get the correct expected value. That's only The formula for that is just n times p. And then uh, 12 says, same thing, what is the standard deviation? Well, the standard deviation, if you're figuring it out by hand, it's the square root of n times p times q. n times p is 0.5, and then times uh, the q is also 0.5. So you take 30 times 0.5 times 0.5, which gives you 7.5. That's the variance. And then if you take the square root of it, that's your standard deviation. So the standard deviation is 2.738. And I believe that that is... Um, all the problems on that section. So I'll stop right there.